time for us to go outside Africa and we have Joe Hansen on standby for that. Good morning, morning Joe. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Um, great story. Great uh, updates coming from Kenya. Wow. It's quite shocking that uh, Angola elections came uh, right after Kenya. They do have their results. Kenya is still um, dragging feet on getting their results anytime soon. But <laughs> like it's rightly said, <laughs> we need to leave the African continent now. And let's check out what's happening outside of the African continent. Let's move on straight to my very first story and um, I'll take you guys to the weather. As the rains come heavy, yes, heavy in some parts of Africa, particularly here in Nigeria. Uh, let's see what the weather conditions look like outside of Africa. Well, cities in eastern China have suspended ferry services as we speak and suspended classes as day breaks up for the arrival of Typhoon Hinamnor, a strong storm that is expected to also affect neighboring Taiwan, Japan and Korea. Shanghai on Sunday suspended ferry services and uh, deployed more than 50,000 police officers to aid the rescues and guide traffic away from danger areas. The eastern business hub of Wenzhou also ordered all classes suspended today. Typhoon Hinamnor is the strongest global storm of 2022 and is forecasted to move gradually northward into the East China Sea. Evacuations and flight cancellations have been ordered in Japan's Okinawa. The storm is also expected to bring intense rainfall to the Korean Peninsula, bringing the possibility of flooding. So that's exactly what's happening in uh, that area, the Asian Pacific, you could call it. And everyone is bracing up for what they call one of the biggest typhoons for 2022. Well, let's still talk about climate change right about now. Even as relief efforts continue, nearly 1,300 people have died in another area as a result of Pakistan's catastrophic floods. The death toll since June has risen to 1,290, with 29 people dying in the last 24 hours. And that's the latest report coming from Pakistan. But that's not all. Let's also tell you that Pakistan on Saturday made a desperate plea to the international community, begging to ensure that their resolve to support the country remains undeterred as the uh, cataclysmic floods similar to the destruction caused by Hurricane Katrina in the US in 2005 is indeed dealt with. Pakistan is struggling to respond to the floods given its unprecedented magnitude and is expected to add $10 billion worth of damages to the already tittering economy. The Pakistan government has set up a, a nodal disaster agency, the National Flood Response Coordination Center, to provide an institutional response to the devastating flood. So it's indeed problematic. Well, following the high-level meeting, a Pakistan civil and military officials said the federal government was doing everything it can to bring back normalcy in the country. But you know what? It's natural disaster. Normalcy will only come if it decides to stop. So that's all we have coming from outside of these countries, talking about Pakistan, of course, Asia as well. They are indeed facing stiff opposition, not just opposition with the humans, but we're talking about natural disaster and is indeed causing a lot of challenges. Well, let's go now to a rather sad story and it happened uh, not quite long ago, a few hours back when we look at the African time zone, talk about West African time and of course GMT, at least 10 people have been killed and another 15 injured in a starving rampage in Canada's central Saskatchewan province. Uh, police have indeed said, well, uh, Saskatchewan is indeed a, a place known to be very peaceful. But what happened? Well, the victims were found in 13 locations in the James Smith Free Nation and nearby village of Weldon. Two suspects named as Damien Sanderson and Miles Sanderson are on the run and considered armed and dangerous. Residents have been towed to shelter in place as a massive manhunt continues across a huge geographical area. Checkpoints have been set up with police checking travellers' identification and drivers have been urged not to pick up hitchhikers. A state of emergency has been declared in the James Smith Free Nation, an indigenous community with about 2,000 residents northeast of Weldon, where about 200 people live. Well, let's take a look at this um, press, release, uh, press conference that was immediately held uh, right there. And uh, this will indeed show more insight, especially when um, the uh, police representative had to speak. Ten deceased individuals in 13 locations in the community of, of James Smith Cree Nation and Weldon, Saskatchewan. Several additional victims have been injured. 
15 of which at this point have been transported to various hospitals. Currently, we are actively looking for the two suspects, helping the victims and investigating the many crime scenes. We are dedicating a maximum number of resources to this investigation. At 9.45 a.m., a fourth dangerous persons alert was sent to the entire province, indicating multiple victims in multiple locations were located, including one victim outside the James Smith Cree Nation, one in the community of Weldon, Saskatchewan, and that some victims were believed to have been attacked randomly. So that's it. Um, it's uh, one big story right now in that area. Well, a dangerous person alert has been sent to all mobile phones across the provinces of uh, Saskatchewan. Well, Manitoba and of course Alberta, an enormous region, almost half the size of Europe. So everyone is worried. No more picking hitchhikers on the road. You need to be sure that you do not allow anyone coming to your home right about now. Uh, stores, supermarkets, name them, children going to school, everyone is on high alert. And it will amaze you that that particular area, that uh, Saskatchewan, I seem to have a little difficulty in pronouncing that name, but it's fine. Um, that particular area is twice the size of Europe. Now, that is huge. So the question is, how are they going to uh, catch uh, uh, these guys, the Sandersons? They do not know if they are related as we speak, or better still, if these brothers have something in common. And the, the, the most important thing about this story that's actually helping the police to follow and trail closely is that these incidences or these killings, these attacks were carried out at different time zones within the same area. So how would they be able to nick the situation in the bud? Now that's one question and that's one thing that everyone is actually looking forward to um, see the police actually unravel. But this is what's happening um, outside of Africa, especially in Canada. Uh, things are indeed going on. So if you do have a relative there, you might want to put a call through to them and ensure that they are safe. Uh, but from me here, that's all coming from my desk on Outside South Africa. Thank you very much, Joe, for the updates there. Uh, quite scary and uncomfortable to see what's happening, uh, you know, with, in Saskatchewan, Alberta and Manitoba. And I, I'm hoping that people are safe and that these two men are caught for the safety of the general public. But also to see that climate change is very much an important conversation that we're having in Africa as much as they're having and feeling the impact outside Africa. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. And congratulations to your Salge, by the way, before I leave. Uh, you, were, you, were, you, were, you were grinning. I almost saw your, your teeth in your ears, man. Come on, man. I've been grinning since yesterday. I was hoping Udoka would join us this morning, but of course, we missed okay. Udoka, so we had to bring where's, him back. Where's Udoka? Is he, is he okay? <laughs> Can He's drinking us no tears. I heard it was running fever or something. <laughs> All right. Should have a fever. Right. I like that you've given honor to whom honor is due in the world of sports. So thank you for cele celebrating with Osalge and the rest of us, you know, Manchester United. Love That's us. it. Oh, really? Okay. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's not, to be honest, it's not like we really had any fears. It's Arsenal. They've been our, our Arsenal. Okay, hey. let's not even go into that conversation. Please. Let's not start unearthing some very important information that would throw some people under the bus. Thank you. Uh.